What do you got there? You got the steaks? Uh-huh. And then you we got... have tenderized cutlets, and we're going to tenderize them a little bit more. That one looks pretty good by itself. And then it'll go in flour. And then from the flour into canned milk. And it goes again into flow. Pound it in real good in there. Uh, this is a peace copper that we made and it's got a cowboy hat and JS on it for her birthday. <laughs> all right now explain to me Marilyn what you what all has got to be done here right now I'm just working just it's a little bit sticky for rolls so I'm working a little bit of bread flour a little bit of my flour into it kneading it both of those and, and then I will just pat it out and cut it. I mean, we need to cut and put it in the that, so. in the uh, pans in the Dutch ovens to cook. And I'm melting some butter to go on it so that it'll have a nice golden crust. And then, how long do you have to let it bake in the Dutch oven? Well, we let it rise again, just about five minutes or ten minutes, and then depending on how the coals, sometimes the coals are hotter than others, and you just have to watch it real carefully. Right. So, 20 minutes. about 20 minutes usually. How come we got two? Huh? Two different heights. And. Oh, they even went through the glove. They're not on the chuck wagon, so... Women aren't on the chuck wagon. No, they didn't go on the trail wagons and stuff, so... The cook was normally a man. Like and me. usually pretty small. And sometimes girls would tuck their hair up under their hat and dress like boys and be the wranglers. Yeah. And they'd get by with it. But mostly, the women weren't there. Now, when they cooked at the ranch, if they set up at the ranch and had, you know, the people work parties and stuff, the women would cook. But, yep. but they didn't normally go on the trail line, so that's a not, hey. not very authentic. That's your melted butter that you did on the fire. Mm -hmm. In the very hot cast iron pot. <laughs> <laughs> That's the cobbler again. That really looks good now. That does get good, good. These are the big biscuits when they come out of the Dutch oven. Butter the tops and then we put them in a flour sack towel in a dough riser. Okay. That's
you make bread as opposed to rolls. Okay. these apart and we can put them out in the sunshine and they'll stay warm and wonderful till time to eat. Toe boot works okay. Yeah, toe boot. And I bet that's close enough. Open, open that up right quick. And then we'll see how dry they are. Oh that's boy. Well drained. Yeah, that's good. Is that your favorite thing to do? No. <laughs> Not exactly. But they're getting a little brown, so they're about ready. Whoa, you're gonna... Oh. I would start taking them out. Now, tell me about the chicken fried steaks. Now, what kind of meat is that exactly? Well, we take, uh, say, for instance, we take ground steak. Yeah. Uh, we cut it in four to six ounce uh, pieces. We tenderize it a couple of times. Uh, we dip it in flour, then in batter, then in flour and batter. And then we fry it and hope you like it. And we try to fry it at about 350 to 360. And how many steaks do you usually do for a competition? 40 to 50, anywhere from 40 to 70. 40 to 70. Somebody won't show up with their wagon. Yeah. And they've already pre sold all the tickets. So right. They'll go around and ask people to go do another 10 or 20. You know, they'll try to split the stakes up between the wagons that are prepped there. Yeah. And sometimes you have to cook 70. Yeah. And we push as high as 120. Yeah, We're running pretty close to home time. One, uh, about 140. 130. About 130. How are the potatoes tasting? Well, tasting. Jack said if we, if we wanted to settle for them like tasting like that, I guess it'd be alright. So I'm thinking that would be good. What do you think? Yeah. Need a little more pepper. How many times do you have to normally uh, tend to your fire? Well, you have to change it depending on what you're cooking. So if you want a slow, even heat, you can get it started and leave it. But if, like right now, I need to turn my burner up, so I'm trying to get more fire under me. Right. Because for gravy, you know, the milk's going to be cool and it needs to stay really good and hot. Okay. So it's little, little fingers are licking up there, so maybe I'm got to go in there. Now then, we're going to do the gravy. And I have about a cup and a half of shortening melted, and I'm going to put about a cup and a half of flour in that. Right. And that's about a cup. And then get it good and thick and then put your milk in it and stir it around and then season it with salt and pepper. Right. You can buy gravy mixes and they're good, but they're just as much trouble to me because I've made a lot of gravy in my life and I right. just know how, so I just do it. Well, there's nothing better than homemade gravy, I think. Putting the mashed potatoes in a pan with some water. Okay. And it'll stay, they'll stay warm and moist that way. And, 
And that's usually the very last thing I'm doing is stirring gravy when I get everything else out. There you go. You know, if I wasn't late, I just want to get a spring. I know. No, no, that's just a little shirt. Yeah. I have to check up on it. I got a lot of potatoes to give it away. Give it a little bit. Keep it from being out. I never got my grandmother's secret in her white cream. That's perfect. You know, the secret is just making a lot of it. And then you finally figure it out, and it's like, oh, that's all right. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. There's, what do you what do you give this one? A nine or a ten? Oh, a ten by all means, because of the people we did it for, <laughs> and with, and all the help we had. Lots of fun, and we don't have to find out whether we won. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's a good deal. We don't have to clean up, y'all. Yeah. <laughs>